your help too. We we should can do this together. Yes, only Ukrainians. We are too small and we are too not aggressive. Yes, we are farmland. So we need help, physical help, like force, not only weapons, but we, we need peacekeepers to make peace here from the West. Because what Putin says, he is doing peacekeeping here or something. Mm -hmm. He is killing us and says it just, he brings peace to Ukraine, right? Stop him, please. Uh, Elena, uh, from what we hear, the Russians are very close to taking the capital. Now, they've run into all sorts of resistance from your husband among them. But if they take over the capital, the feeling seems to be they won. The country is theirs. Uh, what does your husband tell you? What, what are your fears after that? My husband didn't tell me much. He told me, I love you. That's all I need to know. I told him I'm proud of you, and I love you too. Now, what are the feelings? The feelings that we will fight till the last blood. You know, those people who were afraid already left here. Many people fled, and I'm very happy for them. I wish them to get to, to, get to the safe place, you know, and be okay, and have a chance to come back to their homes after this nightmare ends. People who left here, we are ready to fight till till the last blood. Those guys, they told us that stay in the bomb shelter as long as needed. And when we open you up, we hope that it will be us who will open you from the bomb shelters. We just need to stand there. So we believe that they will. Elena, uh, if, if you could speak to President Biden, what, what would you tell him? What would you ask him? Mr. President Biden, if you stop Russian aggression, if you stop aggression of Vladimir Putin right now, with a very serious, with a very concrete decision to intervene immediately with all the needed forces and prevent the genocide and prevent catastrophe and prevent the Third World War, you will be the best man in the world. You will be a person who will be a part of big history. The president who stopped the global catastrophe, who prevented the collapse of democracy in the world, the collapse of humanity. I'm sorry, my English is not good enough to express what I'm really thinking, but I'm, so, I'm saying that he will be really a big person, you know, and Americans and Western people. And we as humanity, we will be really smart, intelligent people, you know, that prevented many deaths, prevented many, many tyranny in the world. Yes, it's, it's a very, very important moment right now, today, yes, how you behave. Because if you wait for some more days or some more weeks, that will be collapse. That will be, you will be defeated. We will go down, all of us. I mean, all of us in the world. Elena, thank you very, very much. Um, I wish the best for you, your beautiful children, including your five-month-old there. Uh, just beautiful. Please hang in there. Thank you. Uh, a I lot of people are watching. I, I hope I hope people I respond. Can. Finish that thought. Okay. I wanted to say that I want a happy end in this in this story, and it's still, it's still possible. Happen. It's, thank it you, Elena. Still very, very very much. It could it could still happen. Uh, Elena, thank you very very much. Uh, again, what is so riveting about this is this is a person who was thrust into this role speaking from a shelter about what's going on around her. Uh, all men between the ages of 18 and 60, uh, some reports as old as 65, have been suited up for battle to take on the Russians against overwhelming odds. Uh, we can say that Russian troops are uh, massively moving on the capital right now and have a clear advantage. But they've had a bumpy entrance into uh, Ukraine itself, surprisingly so. Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin with us, the former Deputy Undersecretary of Defense. General. First of all, 